The solvent plays a huge role in SN1, just like it did in SN2 reactions. And in SN1 reactions, you need polar protic solvents, water, ammonia, alcohols, etc. And what the polar protic solvents do, remember polar protic means they have NH, OH, HF bonds, etc. Mainly the NH, OH are what we have. They enhance the rate of ionization of the alkyl halide in an SN1 reaction. And why? Because they stabilize the transition state leading to the carbocation. If you notice here, on the carbon, charges are developing as we break, of course, the carbon halogen bond. So those charges need to be stabilized and there's nothing better than protic solvent molecules. So the water, for example, right here has delta plus, delta plus on it. So it's much better at stabilizing the bromide and of course, the O minus, O delta minus is great at stabilizing the carbocation. So there's a measure, we're not gonna go into it, it's more advanced, there's a measure of how good these solvents are at uh, solvating the ions, and that's called the dielectric constant. And it's a measure. The higher the number, of course, the better the solvent will be, the protic solvent will be. So water has 80. Look at how significant the reaction would be. Reaction rate, 8,000. Methanol is 1,000. Ethanol is 200. And then acetone would be one. Nonpolar solvents who would be almost nothing. So the higher the dielectric constant, the better. Now, the one thing that you need to remember is that we generally use alcohols are used as solvents because they are better at dissolving organic compounds. So water is not great at dissolving organic compounds. That's why there aren't that many aqueous reactions run almost really very few run in organic chemistry because water is not great at uh, dissolving those organic compounds. So use alcohols like methanol, ethanol, etc. Now the last thing that we need to talk about is stereochemistry. In stereochemistry, SN1 results in a racemic mixture. So if you have this group, and by the way, this is S3-bromo-3-methylhexane. I'll show you how that looks like. So we have a That's the bromine, and of course, there's a CH3 here. We, I'm showing it. And I'm just showing you the four groups that we put them here. This would be your propyl group. That's why it's called PR. Obviously, this is your methyl group, and this is your ethyl group. And of course, you have your bromine Okay, 
And of course you have your methyl. So let's say this reaction takes place by breaking this double bond. And when the double bond breaks, you're going to have now this molecule right here. And let me just get more space here. This is AT, the ethyl. There's a positive charge. Now this molecule, the geometry of this molecule is planar. So it's a flat molecule. And if we were to draw this, and I'm gonna do my best because I'm not sure how helpful this writing tab is. Not sure if you can see it, that let's see if you can see. And by the way, this is PR, not BR, so just the propyl group. Make sure you make that adjustment. Let me just move up the positive charge a little bit on the top to show you the p orbital, the empty p orbital. What I want you to think of is if you can construct this as a model at home, you will see that it's a flat molecule, trigonal planar, and then you have two, you have an empty p orbital. And what happens here is that let's say our, in this case, our nucleophile is methanol. So then the methanol has two choices of attack. It can attack from the front or it can attack from the back. Just bear with me here. And think about it, if it attacks from the back, it's going to have a different configuration than from the front, let's say. Whatever you think is the front, whatever you think is the back. So you have an MTP orbital. So that results in the following. This would give us This is a CH3.
Well, this one would give us right here. So this would be an S. This is one. The purple would be two. Ethyl would be three. Still an S, but this one would be obviously since we switch them and this is a mirror image, this would be one, that would be two, that would be three. This would be the R. So you get a racemic mixture. And if you ever encounter that, then you would have to draw both the S and the R. And remember, it's just a switch of the atoms and you have multiple ways of drawing that. 